Okay, welcome um, to uh, Child Psychology, Chapter 4, Prenatal Development. That's what we're going to cover this week. We're only going to cover half of it today. So let's get started. These are the things that are uh, going to be covered uh, in Chapter 4. We're going to get through the first half of that. Uh, maybe, um, you know, from the prenatal, uh, from prenatal development all the way to birth, and then we'll have to leave the other stuff for uh, Thursday. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first, actually, we're going to talk about reproduction a little bit. Um, that's where we left off last time, talking about cellular reproduction. Now we're going to talk about reproduction. Uh, well, at the, uh, not at the cellular level, but more, well, actually, yes, but uh, we're eventually going to get to birth, to, you know, that kind of reproduction. Okay, and I know there's little symbols there, little N's and I's. Um, like I said, sometimes when you put things in the iPad, it changes them a little bit. But those, those were supposed to be, uh, you know, Roman numerals and numbers and things like that. Okay, so let's talk about the female menstrual cycle which um, all of you are familiar with probably, especially if you're a female and you're of a certain age. Um, so ovulation, we've all heard of ovulation. So um, females that have started ovulation, okay, there's a time when you, and certain age when you start ovulating and then there's a certain age when you stop. We're not gonna cover the, the part when you stop, that would be later in adulthood. Um, but we will talk about, uh, when we talk about our lessons, we will talk about when it starts and what's likely to affect the, uh, the timing there of when uh, it starts. But today we're just talking about uh, a little bit of ovulation itself. So, so the female releases an ovum about every 28 days. That's when you, you know, that's when, uh, it's, an ovum is basically an, uh, you can think of it like an egg. It's unfertilized, remember, uh, it only contains about it only contains 23 chromosomes, half of the genetic material that's needed to make a human being. The other half will be provided by the sperm, okay? Uh, so that's ovulation, it's the release of this uh, ovum. And the uh, ovum is released by the ovaries. The ovaries, of course, will produce um, several ova over the um, lifetime of the, uh, you know, of ovulation. And, um, you know, ova is the plural for ovum, okay? So what happens when this ovum is released, okay? It's going to travel through the fallopian tube. I'll show you an image in a little bit. That's that thing that looks like a tube attached to the uterus. So it's going to move through the fallopian tube. And it may be fertilized as it moves its way down, okay, as it travels there. Uh, usually in about 24 hours by the sperm, if you've had sex, in about 24 hours, you can have fertilization. And when the um, ovum uh, meets the sperm and becomes fertilized, now you have a, you, what you can call a, or you can think of as a uh, fertilized egg, and it's, um, it's now gonna be called a zygote, which we mentioned before. Okay, and the zygote would have the, um, both pairs of the 23 chromosomes, half from your mom, half from, well, half from the male, half from the female, so it will, have, it will have all 46 uh, chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes to make a human being. Okay, and if you do get fertilization, the uterus will then prepare itself uh, for conception. And what will happen is um, basically you're gonna get this thick lining along the walls of your uterus if you're a female. Uh, kind of fleshy tissue there that will develop and the zygote will try to implant itself there and then we'll begin to grow. If the zygote does not implant itself, or let's say the, um, the ovum is not fertilized, uh, then that fleshy tissue along the walls of the uterus uh, will then be shed basically, expelled through the vagina, and that's uh, when you get your period. That's all that bloody stuff that comes out, okay? But if, um, if the zygote does implant itself, then you won't get your period. And then after a while, you'll, be, you'll begin suspecting that you're pregnant. And then you'll, you know, hopefully take some tests 
if those tests say that, it, that you're pregnant, then you might wanna um, go see a doctor to confirm that and uh, to you know, prepare for what comes next. So here's an image for you guys. Um, so you can see there, this, the fallopian tube is, uh, well, this thing that looks like a tube there, okay? The ovaries there at the end of the fallopian tube, um, an ovum is released. And if you've had sex, there's gonna be, you know, well, unprotected sex, I guess I should say. There's gonna be sperm there that try to uh, basically uh, make their way to the ovum over here. You can see in the image there, close to the, um, close to the ovary there. And one of them will basically, usually one of them, will be the one that basically uh, fertilizes the ovum. And then this, and then you'll have a zygote and the zygote will move its way down and as it does that, it will be dividing. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then it'll try to implant itself, attach itself to the, uh, that uh, fleshy kind of lining along the walls of the uterus. And if it's not, then it will be, it'll be shed uh, you know, during uh, your period. You won't even know that you could have been pregnant. Okay, let's keep going. So, um, Let's assume that um, you know you are pregnant, that uh, the zygote has been fertilized, okay? And uh, well, that would start the uh, periods of prenatal development. And we're gonna talk about those. There's three main periods of prenatal development. There's the germinal period, which we actually talked a little bit about already, actually mentioned already. Um, the embryonic period, and then the fetal period. And you can see an image there that, um, greatly enlarged image of a sperm trying to basically fertilize the ovum. It has uh, reached the ovum, probably the first one, and it's trying to make its way in there and basically release its genetic material. That will make a complete human being half the genetic material, 23 chromosomes from the female and then half from the male that will be provided by the sperm. And you can see, I don't know if you can see from here, but yes, the you can see that the ovum is much larger than the, uh, than the sperm. The ovum is uh, hundreds of times larger than the sperm. Let's keep going and let's talk about this um, germinal period. So the germinal period is the, the first uh, 14 days, okay? So the first 14 days, you know, after uh, fertilization. So when you have a zygote and a, uh, not a zygote, uh, an ovum and a sperm meet, you get a zygote, a fertilized egg with all the genetic material needed to make a human, okay? Uh, and this zygote, this fertilized egg, like I said, um, will begin floating down the uterus. And as it's doing that, it will begin uh, duplicating, which means it'll be basically um, go from being one cell, okay, to two, to four, et cetera, okay? Um, within hours, okay, it, uh, it will basically begin to divide. Within hours of conception, it will begin to divide and will go from just one cell uh, to hundreds and then thousands and it will continue to develop later in the pregnancy. But right now we're just talking about the germinal period, the first 14 days. But eventually by the time you're born, you'll have billions of cells. <clears throat> so duplication begins within hours of conception. And then implantation, which is very important, which we mentioned, right? Um, usually takes place about 10 days after conception. About 10 days, this thing will be dividing and it'll be making its way down the uterus. And after about 10 days, it will implant, implant itself. And then the placenta will develop, okay? That will attach the zygote, <clears throat> you know, to the mother and uh, will provide nourishment and protection. And then the organism, the zygote, will begin to grow rapidly. Once it's attached and getting that nourishment, it will grow rapidly. But then after that, we're gonna enter the embryonic period. Okay, so the, these um, uh, first 10 days, it's called the most dangerous journey, according to the image here. Because <clears throat> the zygote, you know, needs to make its way down and implant itself. And it will not increase its size because it's not yet being nourished by the mother not until it implants itself. And somewhere it should say, uh, maybe later, uh, most of them will, believe it or not, will not make it 
only about 40% of them, it should say somewhere, I forget where, but only about 40% of them will actually achieve implantation. So most of them won't even make it and you wouldn't even know that you could have been pregnant. So right from the beginning, the odds are against you for being, you know, born, you know. More about the germinal period. <clears throat> so those first two weeks, uh, those 14 days, right, the zygote will travel in the fallopian tube. I've said that, but here it is in words. It floats in the uterus, okay? And then once, uh, and it, it's undergoing rapid cell division, okay? It's, it, it's dividing rapidly from one cell and will, you know, turn into hundreds. And the zygote, by the way, when it's dividing, it's called a blastocyst. That's just what it's called, a blastocyst. It's a dividing zygote. And if the uh, blastocyst should completely separate and make two copies of itself, complete separation, not cell division within the zygote, but complete separation, um, then that would, that would lead to identical twins. Okay, if it, if it then, if those then separate again, that will lead to quadruplets. Now that's the way it happens naturally. But I did mention now with these um, basically fertility uh, methods that they have, uh, that you can get twins, quadruplets, et cetera, more often, but it's usually not through, uh, through cell separation. It's usually that they implant, like I said before, uh, several fertilized uh, you know, zygotes uh, in the mother. And then if more than one survives, then you have fraternal twins. And you know, depending on how many survive, you, you can have multiple births. But naturally, it's supposed to happen like this. More about the germinal period. During the germinal period, you get something called uh, cell differentiation. Um, duplication is one thing, but there'll come a point where the cells will begin to differentiate and will take on different forms, okay? At the eight cell stage, the stem cells, what are called stem cells, will separate. And the ones on the, the outer cells, okay, the outer ones will become the placenta which I mentioned, which will protect and nourish, um, you know, that what will become an embryo. And then the inner cells will become um, the embryo. So you get this thing, basically, the, called the placenta, which will protect and nourish developing embryo and will, you know, and then basically that's when this zygote has already been attached, already implanted itself, this placenta will develop. Like I said, implantation will take about 10 days Okay, and the outer cells uh, are the ones that will embed in the uterus. The cells that will become the placenta are the ones that embed in the uterus. Uh, and it says there, like I mentioned, only about 40% of zygotes will achieve uh, this, will achieve implantation. Most of them will not make it, and you'll flush them out during your period. You won't even know that you could have been pregnant. And the reason a lot of them are uh, basically flushed out and then achieve implantation um, is because, you know, they, um, they could be abnormal. Or, uh, or you might be doing things to make it um, harder um, for implantation to occur. Uh, you might be, for instance, taking drugs, not taking very, very good care of yourself. If you're doing things that could potentially harm the developing embryo, and we're not at the embryonic stage yet, uh, uh, that will, that, what that will happen is you won't really harm the zygote yet, it's not yet attached to you, but it will prevent implantation. But if you do achieve implantation, and by that time you should more or less know that you're pregnant and start taking care of yourself, uh, you know, you should be okay. But if anything goes wrong at the beginning, no implantation occurs, you don't even know that you could have been pregnant. Here's some images for you guys. So you see the zygote there at the beginning, that's a fertilized uh, ovum or fertilized egg, if you wanna call it that. And then 30 hours later, you can see, hours later begins to divide 30 hours, it looks like it's turning into two cells there. Uh, two days later, more division, 2.5 days, three days. And the interesting thing is by four to five days, this zygote actually looks like the planet Earth. Okay, so it's basically going from uh, one cell into hundreds. And like I said, eventually the cells, the outer and inner cells will differentiate. And the outer cells will be, you know, after implantation, uh, you know, will basically become the placenta and, uh, you know, which nourishes and protects. And then the inner cells will become the embryo. 
All right, uh, let's talk now about the embryonic period. So the embryonic period there, the embryonic period would be the third to the eighth week. The first two weeks, that's the germinal period. And by the way, uh, the first two weeks are called the germinal period because um, there is a, uh, you know, germination. To germinate means to travel. So basically the zygote is traveling down the fallopian tube, achieves implantation. And then shortly after that, the germinal period begins. The traveling is complete. And by the third week, we are, you know, you're set to enter the uh, embryonic period, the third to the eighth week. Some important things here, I like to put them in bold. So you, um, uh, at 22 days, okay? So basically by the end of the third week, one day later, 22 days, there's something called a neural tube that develops. And basically it's a tube, it looks like a worm, okay? And it will become the central nervous system. It just looks like a worm at the beginning, but uh, one end of it will become, you know, the brain. And then from there, uh, you know, that will become the spinal cord all the way to the end, you know, to the tip of the spinal cord. Uh, that's that neural tube that developed, which, which will become the nervous, the, the nervous system, the central nervous system, I should say, the brain and spinal cord. By the fourth week, uh, the embryo is about an eighth of an inch. So not very large at all. Okay, but some interesting things are already happening. The head, the eyes, the ears, the nose are already beginning to form. Okay, and more interesting than that is that there's a little tiny blood vessel that begins to beat. And that little tiny blood vessel later on will become the heart. So uh, this little tiny blood vessel begins to beat. That's the first sign of cardiovascular activity. And it's only been four weeks. And uh, I would say that that means that the embryo is alive. But there's varying definitions of that. But once you have a, a pulse, no matter how tiny, you know, I would say that there's, you know, there's definitely uh, life there. Before we just had a mass of cells that dividing. Eventually, you have a little, a little bit of a pulse. Let's keep going. Oh, by the way, there's an image there. By the fourth week, you can see a fourth week old uh, embryo there. Doesn't look like much, right? Doesn't yet look human, but that's what um, the embryo looks like at the fourth week. More about the embryonic period. Fifth and sixth week, the fifth uh, week, uh, the embryo looks like um, the first image you see there on the right, the one at the top. And uh, <clears throat> you can see it looks similar to the, the, uh, the fourth week, almost exactly the same. It's hard to kind of tell them apart a little bit. But during the fifth week, the um, little buds appear. And the, you can see them, those little buds there. They look like mittens or little flippers. Okay, those little buds will become, will become the arms and legs. And there's also a little bit of a tail that you can see a little pointy uh, at the end there. Uh, there's a little point there. <clears throat> um, what looks like a little pointy tail. So yes, we do have, uh, you know, little tails at the beginning. And that will eventually disappear and you'll just have a little tail inside, okay? I mean, not really a fleshy tail, but yes, your spinal cord ends in a little tail made out of uh, bony tissue that's actually internal. By the sixth, seventh week, the embryo is about two and a half centimeter, two and a half centimeters. That's close to an inch. I don't know exactly, but uh, I think of two and a half centimeters as being an inch, but well, an inch comes later. So close, very close to an inch. So you can see there in the image, uh, that's six to seven week embryo there. It might be a seventh week embryo. Um, the upper arms, the forearms, the palms, and web fingers appear. So you can see there's definitely some little arms there, some little legs, still very small. But you can see the little fingers and little toes. I don't know if you can see the toes, but uh, they're webbed at this point, which means that the digits uh, the, the individual fingers are actually attached uh, to each other, um, just like when you see the, um, like the, the feet of a duck. They have webbed feet, and it seems that we have webbed fingers and toes at the beginning. We are in a, an aquatic, aquatic environment during this time, inside what's called the amniotic sac. It's filled with fluid, and the embryo is developing in there, and we have webbed toes and fingers at the beginning. By the sixth, seventh week, you can see that there's little arms, little legs, little web fingers and toes. Let's keep going. More about the embryonic period. Uh, the eighth week, um, some important stuff. Uh, 
happens. Okay, by the eighth week, the embryo is about uh, one inch, which is just almost the same as uh, two and a half centimeters. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's one inch. Okay, um, and the important thing about the eighth week that's in bold there is that by the eighth week, the embryo looks fully human. Okay, and <clears throat> and uh, by about this time, 20% uh, of embryos have also been aborted spontaneously. Okay, so I said only about 40% of zygotes achieve implantation. So already 60% of them make it, didn't make it. And out of those 40% that are left, another 20% will be aborted. The body will reject them. Most of them are abnormal and have defects and they will be rejected. And you'll have what you call a miscarriage. So it could be because they're abnormal, genetic defects, chromosomal defects, uh, but it could also be because of stress. You know, uh, <clears throat> undergoing, you know, difficulties, a lot of stress, a lot of problems uh, is more likely to lead to a spontaneous abortion, have a, a miscarriage. But the embryo is only about an inch. It will be, um, you know, devastating and, and hard for women who ha have that happen, you know, to have a spontaneous abortion like that, I have a miscarriage, okay? But the embryo is only about an inch. It's a lot more devastating if that should happen later. And it is possible that it could happen later as well. <clears throat> Let me tell you a little bit about the growth that is happening here. You can see the uh, eight, eight week old embryo there that's about an inch uh, on the right. And you can see that the head takes up uh, almost half of the entire embryo. The head is very large compared to the rest of the body. So uh, growth follows two principles or two rules. One is called the cephalocado principle which means that the head develops before the rest of the body. That is why the head is so large at the beginning. Cepha means head, by the way, okay? So the head develops before the rest of the body. The brain is very important. So it develops very quickly. Start developing quickly and it takes up a big portion of the embryo at the beginning. And even kids, when they're born, they have big heads compared to adults. And that's partly what makes them look so cute. But this embryo is, uh, you know, <clears throat> The head is about almost half the size of the entire embryo. And uh, <clears throat> so the head develops before the rest of the body or faster, we could say, that's called the cephalocado principle. And then the proximal distal principle means that the center of the body develops before the outer regions. So development occurs more rapidly in the center where the brain is, where the internal organs are, those are already developing, okay? And they develop faster then the rest of the body, faster than the arms and legs, faster than the skin and hair, right? Faster than that thing. That's called the proximal distal principle. That development proceeds from the center outward. Let's keep going. After the eighth week, you enter what's called the uh, fetal period. <clears throat> that starts at the, uh, the third month. So the third month basically, uh, <clears throat> you enter the fetal period. What happens during the fetal period? There's several things that happen, but one very notable thing is that during the fetal period, there is very rapid growth in height and weight, okay? So basically, <clears throat> you know, the embryo, well, start out with an embryo, not very large, you know, not much bigger than an inch. And then during the fetal period, the fetus will actually you know, the embryo will become a fetus, it's called fetus, and then will grow very rapidly. And you'll go from, uh, as a potential mother, pregnant woman, to not showing very much at all, to looking huge by the time you're about to give birth. Okay, there's a lot of rapid growth and, and, gain, and, and weight gain during this time. And I'm talking here for the fetus. The mother, of course, the potential mother could also uh, gain weight, and some women gain more weight than others. And just want to point out if you are underweight or if you're thin, you're probably going to gain more weight. If you're already overweight, you probably won't gain as much. Okay, but you're going to get bigger. <clears throat> uh, the sex organs appear uh, during the fetal period. It's possible to determine the sex of the child with an ultrasound. And what is happening <clears throat> that allows for the sex organs to appear and 
to do an ultrasound <clears throat> to develop the sex, of, I mean, to determine the sex of the child. Um, <clears throat> it starts at the ninth week. Um, at the ninth week, the, uh, basically, uh, there's differentiation of the sex organs. Uh, if we have an XY embryo, and that would be a genetic male, okay? Then what happens is that the SRY gene, SRY stands for sex uh, determining region of the Y, okay? So the Y chromosome, there's a part of it that basically, uh, you know, uh, a gene there that will send signals uh, for the development of sex organs, okay? If there is no signal, there is no Y gene, then you'll have female sex organs. I mentioned before that, uh, you know, that if you have two Xs, you're gonna be a female, okay? So in the absence of the Y chromosome, the absence of this, you know, uh, gene that's on the Y chromosome, you're gonna be a female. Even if uh, there's only one X, like I said, it's possible that there might only be one X and you have uh, basically an abnormal female there, but still, if there's no Y, that will be a female. So to develop a male requires additional hormones, okay? Additional genetic material. If that's not there, you're gonna get a female. By the 12th week, the genitals are fully formed and are sending hormones to the brain. The genitals, okay, are uh, sending hormones to the brain, okay? Uh, and um, by the way, that will affect the uh, brain development. It will cause neurological sex differences. There are differences in the brains of males and females. And uh, this happens, this starts to happen by the 12th week. You have the genitals fully formed and, uh, you know, and then the hormones that are basically um, released by these, um, by the genitals, okay? Um, more testosterone for males, for instance, from the testes, uh, will cause, uh, you know, changes to the brain. So by the 12th week, you know, if the genitals are fully formed, they can do an ultrasound or a little bit after that. I don't know exactly when they do it. I don't remember, but, um, you know, they can do an ultrasound and determine that it's a male or a female. And most of the time, the doctors will get it right. But sometimes they can be wrong when they do an ultrasound. They could say, oh, you have a boy and it's a girl. Or what's more likely to happen is they could think that it's a girl and it's actually a boy because they didn't see, you know, the genitals very well. By the end of the third month, you have a three inch embryo. I mean, it's a fetus at this point, a three inch fetus that weighs about three ounces. So not very much, okay? Still tiny, still not gonna be very large. And you can see there a, uh, I put that picture there. It's supposed to be a, I guess that's about a three month old uh, embryo. Moving on. What about the middle three months? So the middle three months of the fetal period, okay? So during this time, the heartbeat is strong, the digestive and excretory system is developed. So the internal organs have been developing. Like I said before, by the fourth week, there's that little tiny blood vessel that beats that becomes the heart. By, you know, by the middle three months, uh, the heart has developed and is beating strongly, okay? And they can actually uh, let you listen in. You know, the doctor can uh, use this, I believe it's called the stethoscope and let you hear the heartbeat, you know, of your, uh, of your unborn child. And the heart beats very, very rapidly. Okay. Um, yeah, it, you, can, you can hear it and it's, uh, it's very strong uh, and rapid. And when you first hear that, it's, you know, probably a, a bit emotional. You know, there's, you know, you, you know before that, but when you hear that heartbeat, um, you know, it really brings it home to you that there's something alive inside you and it's a, you know, has a heartbeat of its own. The digestive system, like I said, next story systems uh, develop. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, will eventually begin to work. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the fingers, toenails, teeth, and hair develop. Like I said, the outer uh, parts, uh, the, well, the central part of, uh, uh, of the, the embryo, the fetus develops faster. And well, by the middle three months, okay, your finger, toenails and teeth and hair develop. So all that outer stuff, right? Your teeth, your toenails, your fingers, your hair. 
that stuff develops in the middle three months. The brain increases sixfold. So the brain grows rapidly and develops rapidly. There's two important things there that are involved that you need to know. So something happens that's called neurogenesis. And that's where new neurons develop, okay? A lot of new neurons develop, okay? Uh, and synapses between those neuro neurons, okay? And by the way, those synap the, the synapses that develop, uh, you know, when the uh, neurons actually, uh, you know, connect, they don't really touch, but when they form those connections, you know, a synapse is a tiny gap between neurons, okay? Uh, you know, when those connections form, that's called synaptogenesis. So think of it this way. Neurogenesis is when the new neurons develop. And synaptogenesis and when, is when the connections form between them. The synapse, as you could say. So I should have just put the synapse part in the synaptogenesis. But uh, yeah, it's, it's written a little bit awkwardly there. You don't have to worry about the images down here. Uh, just trying to show you guys there the way kind of neurons um, you know, kind of develop and the way they uh, form these, uh, these connections. It's trying to illustrate synaptogenesis. You know, how the neuron, kind of the axon of the neuron extends and there's certain cells that it attaches to and, and attract it uh, to try to get it to make a connection with another neuron. But you don't have to know that. An image that I got for a more, from actually a uh, biological psychology class I used to teach. Just as long as you know what neurogenesis is, the development of new neurons, and synaptogenesis, the development of those synapses, which is the point of communication between neurons. Here's another image for you guys. You can see the, develop, the developing brain during peri different periods of time. 25 days, you can see there, you can see the neural tube there. 25 days, the first one on the upper left there. Um, you can see it doesn't look like much more than a worm, but the upper parts that are basically close to that are where the head is going to develop um, is a little bit more lumpy and that will become the different parts of the of the brain and the rest is just kind of a tube that will become the spinal cord um, by 50 days you can see there that the uh, brain is developing a bit more and the um, and those different parts of the brain the forebrain midbrain and hindbrain are uh, are growing and developing further. You can see that the forebrain, the part in red there, is growing much larger, okay? By 100 days, the forebrain is, you know, even larger, okay? But the brain looks a little bit more like a real brain, but it's smooth. Uh, by 20 weeks, you can see there, a little bit more like, uh, like a human brain, looks more like a human brain. Uh, the wrinkles, uh, it's starting to wrinkle a little bit, but it's very tiny. 28 weeks, a little bit more wrinkling. And by the time uh, you're 35 weeks, 35 to 40 weeks, 36 weeks is considered full term. So by the time you're there, ready basically for, you know, for birth, uh, the brain looks very much like uh, a normal human brain uh, with all its wrinkles, okay? And why does the brain get wrinkled or at least the forebrain as it develops? Um, it is basically so that it can fit into the, uh, into the skull. Think about it this way, okay? If you have a piece of paper and you wanna put it into a, you know, a tennis ball that's been cut in half, uh, it's not gonna fit. But if you crumple that paper, then you can put it inside that tennis ball. Something similar is happening with the brain. The brain is growing larger and larger and folds in on itself you know, basically tries to tuck itself in, folds in on itself, you get all these folds as it tries to squeeze into that small area. Okay, we'll move on. Fetal period, uh, more about the middle three months. Uh, at 22 weeks, you also have another important thing um, called the age of viability. That's very important. The age of viability. Viability means that basically, you know, the fetus could possibly live um, if the, if you know if the fetus were to be born or if the you know the child were to be born around this time at 22 weeks uh, there's a chance the fetus might survive so at 22 weeks there's a chance the fetus could survive outside the uterus but only with special care with respirators heart regulators the heart and lungs are not yet not uh, yet uh, fully developed uh, not yet fully formed and uh, 
the infant can't really breathe on his or her own yet. Uh, but by 22 weeks, uh, you know, be severely premature there. And there's a, there's a chance that the fetus can survive. Okay, but uh, not a very good chance. Um, small chance, I don't have a percentage there. Maybe I should look that up and, you know, put it there. But um, by 26 weeks, if the fetus should make it all the way to 26 weeks and be born at like 26 weeks, then there's a 50% chance of survival, okay? So it's like flipping a coin, 50-50, that there's a chance that, you know, the newborn is, is going to survive. 50% chance it will not live, okay? Uh, if, uh, if, the, um, new, if the infant does survive, then, uh, you know, what is likely to be the case is that 14% of them, which is a high percentage, I know that's not very high, but, you know, still, uh, you know, not a chance you want to take there, 14% will be severely impaired. They'll have problems and defects, okay? 12% of them will actually have cerebral palsy. And cerebral palsy is basically um, a movement disorder that is basically caused by damage to the brain, um, damage to basically the motor cortex of the brain. If you make it to 28 weeks, okay, uh, you'll have a uh, fetus that weighs about three pounds, uh, and by then 95% of them will survive, you know, with some special care, of course. Um, so, you know, a few weeks, Starting at you know week 22, a few weeks make a huge difference in terms of whether you know the new uh, the newborn the you know the fetus will survive if you know he or she should be born around that time. I'm I'm kind of saying fetus and newborn and infant and stuff like that. It's just because when it's in the mother's womb, it's still a fetus, but when it's born, no longer considered a fetus anymore. So you can see some image there of an image there on the lower left of uh, and uh, you know baby that was born uh, premature there okay and as uh, we'll talk about that eventually we'll talk about uh, pre you know what it means to be premature you're born too early basically and also being low birth weight and you know that kind of stuff but that uh, that's a premature baby and then you have also here uh, a fetus inside the mother's womb during the middle three months the fetus will kind of look like that looks exactly like a human being you know, not much hair, but looks exactly like a, like a human being. More about prenatal development. Uh, the final three months, what happens during the final three months is that there's a lot of weight gain and growth of the fetus. The fetus has been growing rapidly, but during the final three months is when you get the most rapid growth and the most weight gain. Okay, so the fetus will gain about four and a half pounds and will average about, you know, seven and a half pounds at birth, okay? That's about the average. You know, of course, um, you know, some newborns are, you know, can weigh a little bit less, some more, some can weigh a lot more, okay? But most of the weight gain and most of the growth basically occurs during the final three months. That's when you really get big as a potential mother. This weight gain ensures that the brain of the fetus is well nourished, okay? Malnutrition will reduce the future ability of, the, uh, of this uh, child to learn. We'll talk about malnutrition at a later chapter, more specifically, but it's a very horrible thing to happen, okay? Um, you know, especially during prenatal development, um, malnutrition is, you know, can cause a lot of problems, but can still occur afterward, okay? And will affect the, you know, developing child. But yes, it, you know, it will, if, if there's malnutrition, uh, the brain will not develop normally and you'll have problems. Well, certain kinds of malnutrition, but we'll talk about malnutrition in general, but if malnutrition is severe enough, it will affect the developing brain. Respiration and the cardiovascular systems uh, mature uh, during the final three months, which means that the, uh, you know, the fetus will become, eventually become capable of uh, breathing on his or her own and you have that newborn, they'll be able to breathe on, on their own, okay? And cardiovascular systems are mature as well. You have, you know, blood flow, blood circulating throughout the body. You know, all that is related, you know, respiration and of course the blood flow throughout the body, okay? The lungs begin to expand and contract. You know, the uh, valves of the heart mature and they open and close, you know, when breathing. But, um, you know, breathing won't start until 
until that infant uh, is born, okay? Uh, this is all, of, co of course, critical to viability. You know, the lungs and the heart being mature enough uh, for the infant to be able to breathe on his or her own. It's important that those things be uh, developed enough so that uh, they can survive out outside the womb and, and breathe on their own. Otherwise, they'll, be, uh, they'll need respirators and, you know, other equipment. So you can see uh, fetus there at 36 weeks. By 36 weeks, it says you have a 12 and a half inch um, fetus there, weighs about five and a half pounds. You wanna to get to as close to 40 weeks as, as you can. There'll still, still be a little bit more growth. But 36 weeks is already considered full term. Okay, full term at 36 weeks, although, you know, not yet uh, fully grown, uh, you know, given, uh, well, but there could still be a couple of weeks left. Okay, um, so that's it for prenatal development. Let's now uh, talk about birth. Okay, so this fetus develops, hopefully is fully developed and is uh, full term, and now the fetus, uh, well, is going to be born. Basically, you're going to get a a newborn. <clears throat> so what causes the beginning of labor? Okay, when you go into labor as a potential mother, right? Uh, well, the brain of the fetus will release something called uh, oxytocin. It's a hormone that will prepare the brain of the fetus for delivery and will begin labor. So the brain of the fetus will release oxytocin. Uh, the fetus will then, the brain will start preparing for delivery and the, um, you know, the fetus, well, should shift in position so that it's head down, basically, you know, uh, ready to come, to come out, basically, the right way, head first. And that will begin labor. It will begin, you know, contraction, things like that. Um, and you'll know that, uh, you know, the baby's going to be born soon. Um, the oxytocin, you know, will also trigger these uh, uh, uterine muscle contractions. Basically, your uterus will begin to contract. The muscles there uh, will begin to basically uh, contract. It's like you're flexing your, your uterus. Um, they'll, they'll contract, um, and that will uh, start labor. Uh, these contractions are basically designed to drive the, uh, you know, the fetus out. Okay, the contractions, okay, and you'll feel it basically, are first going to be weak and irregular. At the beginning, they're not going to be too painful. And they're going to be irregular. They're going to come and go. You might feel some, and then they'll go away, and then they might come back sometime later. They're going to be very weak. Not, they won't hurt too much, but you'll feel it. And they won't occur, you know, uh, regularly. Okay? You might get some, and then you might not get any for, you know, 20 minutes or something like that. Um, it depends on the person, but they'll be weak, and they won't be that often. You're not ready yet. Uh, when the uh, contractions become strong and regular, so they're going to be getting more painful, not more intense. Okay, and you're really going to feel it then, and you're uh, you're going to know that it's it's time. Okay, you need to go to the doctor. They'll become very strong. Okay, and they're less than ten minutes apart. Uh, then you know the fetus is basically well, um, you know, uh, late, you know, well, uh, birth is about to begin, and the fetus will be coming out of you soon. So you need to. Uh, you need to get yourself to the doctor when they're about 10 minutes apart. When they're strong, that means they're painful, okay? You really feel them very strongly. And regular, um, you know, less than 10 minutes apart. Uh, regular means they happen at predictable times. And here's the thing about regular. It doesn't have to be that, you know, they're every five minutes or every three minutes or something like that. They could be, but it could vary. It could be that, you know, you get one after three minutes, and then the next one is after seven minutes. And then after three minutes, after seven minutes. But what you'll see is that there's a pattern, okay? They may not be every three minutes, every five minutes, but they keep coming back, you know, between, you know, they keep coming back and the pattern is clear, okay? It's not, it's just, it's like a, it's, it's a cycle. Every three minutes, every seven minutes, or every two minutes, every five minutes, something like that, it's become uh, regular and predictable. And, you know, that means that uh, you, you need to get to the hospital. Labor has three stages. Let's talk about those. This is going to be simple. So stage one labor is uh, called dilation. 
So the uterus will expand about four inches. So the uterus, the, the cervix, basically, the cervix will actually expand, okay, uh, four inches. Okay, so you might think that, you know, there's no way, you know, you can give birth that doesn't seem like a, you know, a, a, you know, a uh, fetus will fit through there. Remember, the head is very large compared to the rest of the body. Um, but uh, you will get some help, you know, right uh, before birth, uh, the uterus will expand and will get bigger, you know, making birth uh, possible. Actually, for some women, it's still not possible. So some women will have to have a C-section, which we'll, we'll talk about those complications. Um, not sure we get to it today, but we'll, we'll talk about that. So you'll get dilation, you'll be expanding of the cervix or the uterus, okay? Uh, and stage two is expulsion. The contractions, basically the flexing of the muscles of the uterus will drive uh, the fetus through the birth canal. It will basically push the fetus out. And of course, during this time, you know, they're telling you to push. So basically, you know, squeeze your, you know, your uterus tight. It's like you're squeezing your abdomen, squeezing tight, right? And try to uh, further drive that fetus out, right? The contractions are happening on their, on their own. It is causing you to push, but they tell you to, to push basically consciously and, and, and try to push the fetus out. And hopefully it, uh, you know, you can do that. There are some women who, uh, cannot for some reason they can't push hard enough or you know fetus doesn't fit or something like that and then they'll do something else if things happen normally eventually you'll reach the point that's called crowning where you'll be able to see the head of the baby uh, you know right there you know at the opening of the vaginas and so you'll see the vagina there open and it's like the lips of the vagina are around the baby's head forming like a crown and that's why they call it crowning. It's when you see the head of the baby. And that means it's, you know, it's almost over. <clears throat> and then you get expulsion. You know, the baby finally comes out, um, you know, and, uh, and you, have, uh, you have this newborn. Um, for first time mothers, uh, labor lasts about 12 hours on average. If you had, uh, if, if you've given birth before, um, a natural birth, you know, where, you know, you push the baby out, um, you know, seven hours is the average. So it's lower if you've given birth before. For first time mothers, it's about 12 hours of labor on average. So you could be there, you know, be there in the hospital, you know, trying to get this baby out for about 12 hours. The whole process could take about 12 hours, but it varies, okay? For some women, it could take longer. It could take 24 hours, 48 hours, something like that. Um, if you want to have the baby normally and you just keep pushing and pushing, um, you know, and that, you know, can take a long time, of course, but for some women, it could be an hour for some women. It's easy. And in one hour they're done and it wasn't even that bad for them. I know someone, I have an aunt she said, eh, it wasn't that bad. I have one hour and you know, didn't hurt that much. I'm sure she was on medication, but it was very easy for her that, you know, for that one child. But often it's, you know, it's a lot more than that. So it depends, it can vary. My wife tried for about eight hours to push that baby out. She couldn't do it and she had to have a C-section. Okay, um, they gave up around that time. Um, stage three is the afterbirth. Basically the placenta is expelled. You know, they, you know, pull that thing out. Uh, that only lasts a, a few minutes. Let's keep going and show you some images here. You can see, you know, inside there and, you know, what's kind of happening. So when the, uh, the, the oxytocin prepares the, the fetus for, uh, for birth, you know, prepares the brain for birth, the fetus will shift. And normally you want the fetus to be basically head down there <clears throat> uh, like that. So the head will come out first. Okay, you get dilation of the cervix, the fetus should be head first, okay? And then the fetus will eventually, uh, during expulsion, the fetus will come out, and then the third stage there, the placenta, uh, will come out. They might pull that out gently. Okay, moving on, some more pictures over here. Um, you can see there uh, a newborn, uh, some newborns there. 
Um, and I know when you see the pictures of babies and they look all cute and stuff, um, you know, um, that's uh, different. Uh, when you have a newborn, uh, they don't look that cute. They're all slimy and bloody and they're covered in this white wax, waxy substance, um, which basically protects their skin because they're inside a bunch of fluid. Um, and I believe that it's called vermix, I think it's called. But uh, yeah, they don't look that cute at the beginning. But you can see this is good. They're you know, crying and screaming there. Uh, muscles flex, especially the one on the right. And um, you know, that's what happens. They clean them up a little bit for you. They'll cut the umbilical cord and tie it or maybe, uh, yeah, tie it up or, uh, you know, and uh, clean up the baby a little bit and then give the baby to you. Okay. But um, yeah, the whole process can be a bit traumatic. Uh, let's see how we're doing on time. So let me try to play this video. I don't know. If it's gonna work from here, if it doesn't, then you guys can watch it on your own. But yeah, it's the stages of labor. So you're gonna see this, this thing. It is a YouTube video. Uh, I think I'm gonna have a problem. I hope it plays, but I think it's gonna ask me to verify my age, which means I have to log in. And that means that, well, well, let's try it, see what happens. See if this works here. <laughs> 